That's right, my friends. The title does not lie to you. I haven't actually told it. I have no idea what it's going to be, but I'm sure it's something along the lines of, wow, incredible, legendary prisoners only, question mark, or something like that. Hello, welcome to Prison Architect, where today we're going to build a legendary only prisoner prison. Yesterday I had a bit of a mental breakdown with the last series because we spent all this time and effort getting up to the going green stuff uh, after a couple of failed attempts, and... It ended up being just horribly, horribly broken. So I've decided let's let's balance it. And let's balance it in the only way that is sensible and good. And that is only legendary prisoners. I'm sure. Look, I'm going to regret this series, I'm sure. But I'm going to regret it for all the right reasons. And that is chaos and madness and prison architecting gone sexual. Maybe not that last bit. So choose prison agenda. We're going to go with man because... Let's be honest, we'll have enough on our plate without legendary babies as well. Choose your warden. Now, this is actually going to be something that I think is very relevant this time. The lobbyist. Half the likelihood of receiving prisoners who are violent, lethal, volatile, deadly, or fighters, but they will still be legendary. So they might not start fights, but when they do start fights, my God, they're going to hit hard. That could be a very, very relevant warden. Rita. Half the likelihood of... Prisoners being stoical or fearless. Prisoners suppressed twice as likely. Again, if we're going only legendary prisoners, I don't know that that top one even works. The bottom one, though, might be far more relevant. Keep the legendary prisoners under control for longer. We've then got J.W. Periwinkle. Warden Periwinkle says he was a sapper in the war. Guard dogs have a 50% chance of fully uncovering any tunnels. Now, we're not going to play with tunnels. Uh, we're going to turn on escape plans instead because I think they're far more interesting compared to... Uh, tunnels we've got the pacifier the pacifier much like the lobbyist or rita could be very very good in keeping control of what is going to be a lawless hellhole we've got safara Aknova. i don't really care about that to be honest uh if we want profits we can just start a farm as you can kind of tell from what's going on in the background here i'll talk more on that in a second hawk harkman uh he could be very good yeah he could be very good um all guards drop staff keys less often i mean Although, to be fair, if a legendary prisoner wants to leave, it, I'd staff keys are going to make no difference. Eh? They'll just kick the door down. We've got Dr. Slugworth, which is criminally insane, which is obviously irrelevant. Uh, Dr. Hudson actually might not be a terrible idea in the event of a riot, but I'd rather plan to fail than fail to plan. No, that's not what I mean. I would rather prevent riots in the first place than plan to deal with the riots when they break out. You, you're setting yourself up to fail there. So, Dr. Hudson, you're out. The botanist, you're overpowered. You're out. Ecologist, nobody cares about your wind turbines. So it's either, I think, Lobbyist Rita or the Pacifier. Which one is most interesting, I guess, becomes the next question. Um, I don't think any of them, <laughs> to be completely honest. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. That's a difficult one, isn't it? Uh, I, I think maybe I, this might not even work with legendary prisons anyway. So forgive me if I'm overanalyzing here, but I think I'm going to go with the pacifier. Yeah, let's do it. Guard dogs. I want the most fearsome of all. That's right. We're going to go for Bowtie Bandit. I'm always probably going to go for Bowtie Bandit from now on, to be honest with you. And I'm going to go for my usual prison settings, but we will actually go through this in detail because I think it's going to be very relevant and you guys can plan your comments out in advance. Fog of War, we're going to disable. Again, I think for, for your viewing pleasure more than anything else. Let's go for uh, Generate Forest. I don't really care about that, to be honest with you. We've, we've got enough croppage to worry about with the Going Green DLC where that's not a problem. I'm going to disable failure conditions just because I don't want this series to end within two episodes. Trust me, I will pull the plug when I think things are beyond saving. Rebuilding from the ruins, though, could be kind of fun. Gangs? Ooh, that's a hard sell. Legendary gangs could be interesting. All right, go on. Um, we will leave off dynamic reputations because I think legendary already gives them the highest reputations they can have, correct? Uh, prisoner transfers, I'm going to say forget it. We don't need to. They're all legendary. Legendary minimum is as dangerous as legendary maximum, right? Mutators then. Or do we want gangs? Maybe it'd be more interesting to have individual prisoners. I'm doing what's the most interesting experience here, not what, what is necessarily the easiest. Oh, we'll leave that on for the time being, and we'll sort of talk about it as we go through the other mutators. Danger zone, uh, maybe not. The good ship, gain extra reputation depending on drugs or alcohol. Again, I don't think that's relevant because they've already got maximum reputation. Acid rain, just sounds like a pain in the ass. Volatile prisoners or needy prisoners. Uh, it, it just kind of unbalances the systems. Gang warfare, only gang members, only legendary prisoners, and... 
Oh, God. That sounds like a bad idea. Gangs of legendary prisons beating the utter shit out of one another. Go on. Yeah, go on. Why not? <laughs> sounds interesting. The big house. All prisons are legendary. Of course, are going on. Uh, get me out of here. Uh, again, we're gonna we're gonna turn off tunnels, but we are gonna enable escape plans instead. I think I might have accidentally scrolled over that here, but we'll go back to that in a second. We are gonna have on repetition. Of video, I guess is irrelevant. We are gonna keep on no tunnels and fast deliveries. Again, fast deliveries have had bugs with deliveries in the past, so I let's leave this one on anyway. Um, but no tunnels is is pretty good, and we'll we'll turn on escape plans instead. Um, what else have we got here? Changing the rules, so not necessarily better or worse. Short sentences. Does that not mean? Well, surely that'd be a massive benefit for us. What is the downside? Short sentences. I guess training them to do things like workshop is more costly versus the profit you'll get out of them. We'll turn that on. Why not? It might be more interesting to keep the gangs nice and uh, nice and jostled up there. We don't want gang necessarily becoming too, too powerful. Uh, I think that'd be kind of an interesting take on that. And then I want to enable... Do we want any of these here? Ex not particularly. Burn the dead could be interesting uh, if I was a complete lunatic. Big head mode? Big head mode, of course. Um, how do I turn on... Oh, there it is. Escape plans. Nice. Staff needs, weather and temperature, prison transfers. Yeah, I think that's all good. I might start with bureaucracy fully researched. We know how the bureaucracy works. It's only going to slow down the early game. I could just leave it paused until we've done it anyway. So I think I'm going to enable that. Here we go. Have I forgotten anything? So, so to recap then, we've got gangs, escape plans, and bureaucracy fully researched. Nothing else enabled there. Then we have gang warfare enabled. So we only get gang members and we only get legendary gang members. Then we've got no tunnels and fast deliveries, but we have escape plans to cancel out the no tunnels aspect. Shorter sentences to keep the gangs varied rather than one gang completely dominating the prison. And big head mode for uh, shits and giggles, for lack of better word. Starting with 450,000 because we are selling our previous prison, which had 200,000 in the bank from pure corn. Uh, despite the fact that we only had 38 prisoners, which is absolutely hilarious. And of course, the prison itself. Boom. My God, why do I get the feeling I'm going to regret this, eh? So first thing we want to do then, let's take a look at the intake. What does it do here? So we still take on the regular prisoners, so we can still pick medium, maximum, super max, death row, etc. But I assume they'll all be legendary by default. In that case, why not take only minimum security? Legendary minimum security prisoners. Known throughout the realm for his Cayman Island accounts. <laughs> I guess it makes no difference. Especially with short sentences. We could go only supermax. At the end of the day, they're all legendary. So what fucking difference does it make? Maybe supermax prisoners are more likely to start fights than minimum security. But I'll be honest, uh, this is purely anecdotal. I think the minimum security cause more trouble than everybody else. So there are certain things that I didn't realize during our last prison that are worth mentioning. Contraband is a bit more tricky to handle now. Uh, more specifically, you need to scan all of your imports too. So if you've got people working in the workshop, they can set a phone call. They can, during visitation, arrange for contraband to be smuggled in via the workshop. So, And this is stuff that won't be detected by metal detectors, bags of booze, things like that. So first thing we want to do then... I like my square prisons. I, I, I won't lie to you. I really do like my square prisons. They work very, very well for planning purposes we want to make sure that we are 10 blocks in minimum so i'm gonna go 11 blocks in just again to be to be safe and to be sure fuck it let's go 12 blocks why not and then on this we want to go 12 blocks as well so that is the corner of our prison right there okay so just to double check it's 12 blocks that way and 12 that way very nice i'll go ahead and do that for bollocks <laughs> first things first i liked what we had going on you remember the successful prison where we got the we, we had the 500 prisoners i liked the tiered squares that had the the dog patrols because it worked really really well for uncovering tunnels sure we haven't got tunnels this time but for contraband and dealing with escapees because they can just climb over perimeter walls that works really really nicely um, so I'm, I'm going to stick down a, a, a big perimeter wall around the edge anyway. And I'm also going to throw around a, another perimeter wall around the other outside too. I'm going quite hard, I will admit, on the perimeter fences. When we've got legendary prisoners that can kick down a perimeter fence in two seconds flat, probably worth it, isn't it? Um, and then I'll do something like this just to block the road off. And if we end up expending the edges of the prison, this will all be a kind of a waste of money. But by that point, I assume we'll be in a bit better of a financial situation. There we are. Okay. That's going to take a little while. Let's hire a few more workmen. Let's just let them get to work. And I'll take a look at the grants. Now, I've actually disabled pretty much every mod that I had enabled before. Uh, just for compatibility reasons. But just so that we've got as close to the base game balance as possible here. 
So this is going to disable a lot of the grants that came from the grants mod specifically. So we are at a little bit of a disadvantage in that regard. Can I... I mean, this we can do very easily. So we'll kick that one off straight away. This one we can do pretty much without without any sort of side effects. Don't panic about the fact that there's been 11 days that have passed already. I decided, look, it's going to take so long to get these perimeter walls built. I'll go and make dinner. So I want to make dinner. Uh, and now the perimeter walls are finally built. So let me... Well, I, I wish I'd have done this during daytime now so we can actually see what the hell is going on. But I planned out the kind of basic first area of the prison here. So I've, I've measured everything out correctly so that it all it doesn't really matter too much for the time being. We're going to start down here and expand out. Um, but I, I figured this time we could expand out a bit more naturally. So we'll start with this quadrant. Then we'll move into this quadrant, smash the wall down between them, move over into this quadrant. Again, canteen in the middle, yard in the middle, whatever we want in the middle there. I'm thinking maybe build the canteen in this corner. Uh, that way, as we expand into different quadrants, we can just flip the canteen around and expand it naturally to incorporate the amount of prisoners we've got in. Anyway, um, so to, to facilitate that, what I've decided to do is throw down a couple of different entrances to the area. I'm, I'm trying to limit prisoner movement as much as possible because that's going to be obviously the biggest difficulty of having all these bloody legendary prisoners so i've got a couple of road barriers at each end of the road there and then i've thrown down a couple of uh, regular old roadblocks there just to just to try and hold them back basically just try and hold them back as much as possible we've got to put down some door servos too before i forget <laughs> i assume door servos work on road barriers i don't really remember um i'm pretty sure that road barriers are they not automatic? As in, uh, when there's a riot or something, those road barriers just go up, right? So the door servers might be completely useless, but we'll see. It, I, I mean, I'd rather have them and, and not need them than need them and not have them, you know? So let's get down some uh, electrical cables there too. I think you're allowed to build more freely around perimeter walls now. Look, you can place cables under perimeter walls. You never used to be able to do that, right? What about pipes? So pipes you can't, but cables you... Was it always like that? Maybe, maybe it was always the case with electricity cables, but maybe it was just pipes that were the things that weren't allowed. I really don't remember in hindsight. Right, let's go ahead and get all that connected up, and then we'll run this one up here. And then we'll start planning the actual prison itself out, I think. Um, or at least this, the entrance to the prison. Again, security is really our our main concern, at least to start off with. Right, there we are. Much better. And let's get... Uh, well, we'll obviously, this right now is irrelevant, but eventually when we hire some staff, it'll be a bit more important. Get all of you guys connected up. There we go. Okay. I think that's a pretty all right start. Um, yeah, I think the road barriers are... Hang on. Let's just see when they finally finish connecting it up. Guess you might also be able to inverse it so that it's... When there is no signal, it's closed. And when there is a signal, it opens up. The same as how regular barriers work. Oh, also, maybe it's the fact that we haven't got any prisoners yet. That, that's the same reason why all these doors are open too. Anyway, it doesn't really matter too much, eh? Right, so, prison itself then. First thing we want to do is get some servos down, unsurprisingly. So let's go one there. Uh, I've got one there, one there, and one across like that. My reason for doing that is just to make sure that things are as secure as possible, really. Um, that way, what I'm thinking is we'll, again, have the canteen over here. We've got one entrance for staff members. This way can go over to a, uh, you know, infirmary, staff room, that type of thing. And then straight down here can lead onto the prison itself. Um, or at least inmate areas. That way we've got kind of multiple different entrances. It means if staff need to go to the kitchen, they're not potentially opening this up to to inmates. And obviously same with the other areas too there. And we can obviously control that with, with logistics. So let's hire some staff members because, again, we're starting with all the bureaucracy this time. So if we throw some of these down, we can plan out a bit more effectively. Um, we want a chief. Oh. Can't do that quite yet because we don't have any bloody prisoners. A somewhat carefully planned canteen this time. I'm trying to leave gaps between all the tables, you know, just to... I don't think we want to be cramming in legendary prisoners like sardines. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to be a bit more cautious about how this goes down. Um, was there room for one more table? No, I decided not to do that in the end, didn't I? Um, although I suppose we could. I think we could throw down another... Let's just see how it goes with that to start off with. Um, Got to remember to throw down some sprinklers too. So serving tables. We go one, two. Uh, did I seriously fuck that up? My bad. <laughs> I thought it was long enough for, for... No, no, no. That's what I meant to do. Right. And then I was going to throw plants and shit in, you know, to keep them happy. Right. That's fine. Okay. I like that. So let's get some actual tables down now. And that's our first kind of essential area dealt with. Now for this prison, it is almost worth doing what we were doing last time 
with the minimum security prisons whereby I was building other big luxurious prisons because their minimum security and they are allowed that, we could give the super maximum security prisons that we're going to be taking in here. Um, I assume that legendary is disabled by default. Uh, yeah, unavailable because, of course, everybody's legendary prisoner, right? Um, 71 super max available. So we will be taking super max prisoners only for the most part because there's no reason not to at that point, right? Um, what I want then is to basically make the bedrooms as luxurious as possible. So I can't remember the size that we wanted it with originally. Was it like uh, six by seven, I believe it was for the, to fit a cell with absolutely everything in it. Let me plan that out first. Um, again, I won't be much like we did last time. I won't be filling it with everything off the bat. We'll, we'll put in the essentials and then upgrade it as we go. And I'd love to get remote doors on everything, but I feel like it's a terrible idea. It's going to be very expensive. 500 per go. Let's start on the regular jail doors. It'll be, it'll be enough just to slow them down enough for our guards to get over there. Now, armed guards are going to cost a fucking fortune, at least to start off with, until we can get good cash flow coming in. Because at $4 a day, we're not looking so good on the uh, on the old cash front, eh? Brilliant. There we are. Perfect. Just what I wanted. Find a bunch of our workmen now that we've got the perimeter awards done. So, yeah, there you go. So, the room size is correct. Uh, outdoor windows and a large window, preferably. So, that's something we can do relatively cheaply. So, I'm thinking we'll, we'll put in... The things that serve the most functional use. So gym mats, prayer mats, that type of thing. Um, oh, sorry. I should say a punch bag because that actually does give a bonus for that too. Um, okay, comfy bed. I'm, I might actually just go for comfy bed off the get-go just because that saves us. Otherwise, we're just going to end up scrapping like a shitload of beds in the future, aren't we? Um, let's go with comfy bed then. How much more? Oh, man. It's much more expensive. Well, how many prisoners are we going to get in to start off with realistically anyway? Let's throw in the comfy bed. Right. Now, I'm thinking window is a fairly cheap, easy way to keep them happy. Uh, so, if we do window large, I'm not going to give them a fancy one. They can get fucked. Um, if I'm going to tile these rooms out, we'll need it there. So, bookshelf. Bookshelf, toilet, shower, and uh, punch bag would all fulfill some sort of need. So, those are going to be the, the early essential ones. Uh, obviously, the toilet, too, is... I don't know if I said toilet or not, but that is fairly important, I'd argue. Um, let's go and throw one of those down. Now, I'm not sure, still, if we can do the shower-toilet-drain combo. I believe they have fixed that. So, oh, well, not really fixed it, but stopped that from being as as useful. Um, so, we'll just do that instead. And then I want a, a punch bag. That's 150 That's actually relatively cheap. And then... What's the other thing I said? Bookshelf, punch bag... Probably remember now. Uh, room quality. Show me what we've got. No, no. To be fair, that was pretty much it. We could throw in like the um. I guess we could throw in like a radio or a TV, something just to keep them happy. This is a grade of eleven out of fifteen. That's pretty bloody good. Uh. So we could throw in just a couple more and. Oh, man. Chair, wooden stool, leather chair. That goes over the office table. You know what? For the time being, like, let's not go too expensive on these rooms. Because I imagine even that is going to be quite... Yeah. I mean, 2,040. So, annoyingly... Yeah, see, we can't tile that around again. So, we'll just do our kind of usual thing. Now, what I want to do is avoid making giant homogenous cell blocks. So, I think what we should have maybe something like four cells together. And then a remote door or a jail door or something something to separate them out. And with my last pennies, I have bought some guards. We are now minus 74. Uh, <laughs> and I built a reception and that's it. But don't forget, the cells are, what, 2,010 each or something like that? Supermax prisoners give, give us 2,000 straight up. So we're going to go like... Fill capacity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's fill capacity. That's it. Don't go too crazy. And we are going to take as our first go 12 super max prisoners with two guards. All of which are legendary. The prisoners, that is, not the guards. <laughs> what have I done? Okay, here we go. Right. Brace yourself. The guards are braced. <laughs> as braced as they possibly can be. Oh, the fun bus. Welcome, fun bus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, they, their heads are so large. Their heads are large, but their tattoos are small. Oh, I don't like that. And that, that shows you what gangs they're in, right? So we've got one uh, we've got one hyper-Christian. 
We've got we've got three of the uh, three birdkin, and we've got uh, oh no 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 no, no, no. we got two hyper Christians, three birdkin, and three uh, what is that? Like? It looks like the quake symbol. Three Quakers. The Quakers and the hyper Christians are going to be fucking pissed. What's special about you? You've got a fancy shirt. Alexander X. Scott. I don't understand. Attempted murder. 15 years. Plea not guilty. What a guy. Oh, wait. It's short sentences. Drop them all to a year. Oh, wow. Interesting. I didn't think it would do that. I just thought they would spawn him with, you know, shorter sentences relative to their original sentence. Well, that's going to be interesting to try and keep up with them. Um, this guy's name is... Rrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Are we, are we gonna stop him or like, what's going on? Uh, we're letting him out. Is he is he free to go? Uh, what the fuck? He, he's going somewhere. What what the? F he bought a drink. He bought a drink from the drink machine. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's ridiculous thank you for that the minimum security people just murdered the other fucking guy killed by a rival gang member simon donnelly i thought you would be he's, he's medium security now well he's medium security for murdering a supermax prisoner he should be like ultra supermax let's see if they're cocks during during this what did they do then? Was that man called Pooh? What? Then... No, I'm not. I, I did not misread that. I definitely saw. What? <laughs> am I am I going mad? I wasn't just me that saw that, right? Let's get a doctor down. 962 per day. So, you know, we're doing a little bit better on the cash front. We can afford a couple of doctors. Probably don't need a couple. Uh, because it depends on what kicks off during lunchtime here. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. What gangs we got? See, we got the we got the ultra Christians in the same room as the uh, as the birdkin and the Quakers. This is okay. Wow, that's that's angry. That's angry. Obviously, they're supposed to be an analog for a real life gang, but you know, if I talk about that, we'll get in a lot of trouble, won't we? On on, on YouTube, you're not allowed to say that. Right. So logistics. Let's go. Uh, room quality. Then, what do we need? Four plants. We've got two, so a couple more of those and a window. These guys are, are happy to mix. Look, you got an ultra Christian sat next to a Quaker. Was that an Eagle Man? That's an Eagle Man. That's a Quaker, right? Yeah, they are different gangs. Well, that's nice. They can get along. Harmony. Okay, so I think minimum security is the way to go. Legendary minimum security. Oh my god. Again, if they do right, we're still. We're still fucked. We're still in a lot of trouble. Oh, look, they've got those. They're brewing. They're brewing. They're brewing. Carrying booze bag. Well, I've got patrols on it, so they should be able to stop them. Yeah, there you go. Oh, come the fuck on. Yep, yeah, there you go. Trashing the place because I took his booze away. The guard's going to get just murdered. Okay, there you go. Took a couple of guards to stop him, but they actually did manage to stop him. What's wrong with them? Why are they so angry? Let's get a... Well, I mean, obviously, they've got half of their... They've got next to nothing going for them in life. Uh, let's throw down a psychologist then. Let's just see what is the biggest need. Comfort, environment, freedom. They want more freedom. This is a fucking prison, not a bloody butlins. Environment's a big one. I can, I can afford some janitors as long as we can keep more than, you know, a prisoner. <laughs> right, let's try that. You know, let's throw down five of each. Fuck it. No, no, we actually can't afford that one quite yet. Okay, hopefully they'll solve some problems. That's a big patch of blood there. We really need guard taser certification as soon as possible, don't we? Let's throw down a classroom. This is going to be for our guards to... I, I suppose we could have them... Oh, shit. Another guard down. Um, I suppose we could have the guards and the prisoners in the same classroom. Probably not a big deal. Chaos. Fucking chaos. The chief. The leader of one of the gangs of the prison is being punished. Just just tells to receive all the gang members going to cause a lot of trouble while the punishment is in place. Execute him. Fucking execute him. For the time being, all we've got to do is run a prison that's successful enough to be able to get me some tasers. That's all I'm after right now. Oh my god. Well, look, the guards actually got out of that one without getting their ass handed to them. We're down to six guards, though. Brilliant. I hate the gangs. <laughs> I think I really hate the fucking gangs. I think I'd be up for legendary supermax prisons, but the problem is when they all gang together like that, literally, uh, it becomes very difficult, doesn't it? We could always turn it off, but I, I wanted to at least see how it how it plays a, a difficultly. B lemon difficultly. Could turn it off until we get it to the farming stuff. Then when we get farms and like big stonks to be able to afford to replace the guards every two seconds when the gang members sneeze in the wrong direction and everything kicks off, then it's okay. That's the whole reason I included it, was to balance out the, the, the farming stuff, which is a little underbalanced right now. I think we can all admit. Um, but without that, we're just basically watching our guards go into the meat grinder every day. I think what I'll do is I'll turn off gang warfare, which means only gang members turn up. We'll leave gangs enabled, though, so that, I mean, gangs will still, gang, gang members will still turn up. It just won't be absolutely everybody. 
Otherwise, even with only 10 prisoners, that is going to be, on average, three prisoners versus our guards when something does kick off. So I would rather avoid that. There's only three gangs, right? Maybe. Um, I'd rather avoid that if possible, just because, you know, it's a little, a little difficult early on. I'm sure we can handle it later, but for the time being, when we're playing with, like, a few cells and whatnot, that's a bit harder. But I'm happy to crank it back up to Supermax, so if we are going to do that, just know that our Supermax prisoners aren't going to all have each other's backs. So what's wrong with you all? Boo! Yeah, they're fine. No, they're good. Comforts are, comforts are good. Family is pretty poor, so that's the next thing I'll concern myself with after tasers. I still maintain. Tasers first, family second. <laughs> you know, the way it's supposed to be. Anyway, let's leave it there for today. Let me know what you think. I think this is going to be quite fun. But I think it's going to be fucking difficult. And maybe that is part of the fun of it, is trying to balance nothing but legendary Supermax prisoners. And some occasional, occasional gang members, not all the gang members, I'll admit that was a little bit uh, ambitious for someone who's only built one real successful prison before. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll get used to it. I understand how everything works. It's just getting it to work is a different thing entirely because this game, game is, you know complicated in more ways than just its uh game depth to put it politely thank you to the patrons for making this episode possible in the first place and of course voting on prison architect all those many years ago by which i mean roughly a month ago thank you to sign mortar el chalupa cabra daily barbarian psychore lupus blood snakes chaos elias unstab cows ashen jack justin rules nick danger 013 I am Sagatair and Applecat as well for their support. The executive producer tiers over on Patreon. Some complicated names today, which is why I had to read them so very slowly so I didn't mess any of them up. Thank you as well to Evolka, Flom, Sturmcrower, Coldest Flame, Cass, Roger Volko, Dragon Ryan 13, Warsheep, Mount Cadalbe, Unique Weapon, and Scott, along with everyone else as well.